Um, and so first of all, thank you very much um, for working with us on this. And uh, we should say, as uh, Howard said, this is very much uh, the beginning of a conversation. A lot of uh, friendly faces. Uh, hi, Shelley, how are you doing? And, uh, and others around. So um, I know you, you won't be quiet and shy in, in giving feedback. So, um, so let me uh, kind of, I, you've seen this, uh, this uh, information before, but uh, what I think I'm just going to be doing is giving you an update. And I plagiarized some of Nancy's slides. Um, we've been giving um, a, a number of presentations around town. So Nancy, apologize in advance for plagiarism. Um, so uh, as you know, this rich context uh, has a broader angle, but what we're talking about here is uh, federal agencies. Um, the uh, Evidence Act is kind of the, I think many, many people have wanted to figure out how data sets have been used uh, very generally. Um, our particular focus here is on um, the kind of the federal ecosystem. Uh, I, although, as you will see in just a minute, the, the, the general approach has much, much wider implications in the federal government, but we see the, the big push here is coming from the, um, uh, obviously the, the major importance of the federal government in funding, funding research um, and scientific data in general. So the Evidence Act, uh, Title II of the Evidence Act, uh, is the open, uh, focuses in on open data uh, and requires agencies to produce data inventories and information about data use and so on. It is, of course, an uh, unfunded mandate. Uh, and so agencies are very much struggling to figure out how they can, how they can produce the information. Um, clearly, manual approaches are not going to work. Um, there's also very much embedded in the federal data strategy, uh, which Nancy and Suzette Kent, uh, who's the, uh, my other partner in crime on this, who was the former federal CIO, led at the White House. Um, and that was why I was brought in, or one of the reasons I was brought in to work in the office of the federal CIO with a dotted line to Nancy Potok, who, as you probably know, is the former uh, US um, chief statistician. So, so here was the basic idea, um, is what we wanted to do, and this is what we've talked to you about before, is how do we document data set use? And uh, the, uh, this has been effectively a four or five year project that's been funded by Schmidt Futures, Sloan, many other, uh, USDA, many other entities. And um, the broader context was uh, we've been pushing very hard to make use of data in scientific work as well as in uh, evidence-based policy making work. And we had found that, you know, when people land on new data sets, they have no idea how they've been used. So the original imperative four or five years ago was how can we inform researchers how data have been used when they come out of um, scientific work. Now, survey data has been relatively well documented and provided. The new types of data are not. They're buried inside publications. And yet for scientific replicability and reproducibility and so on, you wanna be able to find them. Um, and the vision here was to create an amazon.com for data. Like, you know, you go in, to Amazon and you say, I want to find uh, a books on this particular topic. And they'll say, here are the books, here are the authors that you would want to look at. So the basic idea here was uh, data sets are hiding in plain sight. We need to find them in, in public documents. We're going to start with the scientific literature, find them. And then once you've got the publication, then you can find the data sets, you can find the authors, you can kind of build an ecosystem just like amazon.com 
built an ecosystem around books and then obviously built it more broadly, we could build an ecosystem around data. And uh, then if we uh, distribute it via APIs, agencies can create ways of documenting the use through visualizations. And initially we talked about impact uh, uh, measures. Shelley uh, was very influential in saying, no, we should call them usage message measures, but you could imagine lots of different ways. And I'm an economist. So I focus and my entire career, the way in which we've got buy-in in building data infrastructures is you build an ecosystem where everyone gets credit. So you focus in on how do you create an incentive structure where everyone wins and then you'll move from a um, suboptimal, or in my opinion, a suboptimal approach to um, a, a, a new equilibrium. And we have all the pieces parts, many of the publishers, we've got Chorus, we've got you guys, we've got Data Site, we've got the CDO Council. So all the moving, the technical pieces are there. So the basic idea here is uh, agencies now have uh an, an imperative to produce information on how their data are getting used uh this administration in particular is pushing agency heads to um say you, you know spending 15 20 30 percent of your budget on data what's it getting used for uh i put i just talked about our impetus which is how on earth can we build replicable research uh, and make sure that researchers get credit for the work that they've done. Uh, and we see it in, in, in many other fields. Uh, the conversation here is what's the value proposition for you guys? That's what we want to hear from you. Uh, but so we've been talking to the agencies, to the researchers and academic institutions about what's the mechanism why, where they get credit. Clearly for publishers, some of it's going to be um, visibility for the things that you publish, but there's also presumably going to have to be some monetary transaction. At the end of the day, it's it's for the taxpayer. So here's the problem. And apologies for those of you who've seen this before, but it, it I think it brings it to, to bear. Um, one of the things that I did for which I have received some attention is I built uh, the first and still the only large scale uh, national uh, uh, statistical infrastructure based on administrative records. Um, this is the LEHD program. It's used by literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of researchers. And it's used in many areas of urban planners and so on. Uh, but there's no, inf very little information on how it's being used. So I made those numbers up. That's generally what people say. And part of the reason here is this LEHD program, there, uh, no one cites it. I mean, everyone pushes researchers to do it. I'm going to tell you, I ain't going to do it because it's too much work. Uh, I don't do it for NSF. They insist that I put stuff up. I do the de minimis stuff to just push the button and get out of things because um, there's no credit to me. This is an article that I wrote, I'm using this because it was an article I did with some USDA researchers. The only place where that LEHD program, that data set is described is here in this article. It's not in the references, but what the challenge here is, can we figure out from the semantic context that this is the data set that's being used? So we did a couple of runs at it, but our successful run was in this Kaggle competition, where what we did was we challenged the data science community to say, can you find these, pub these data sets purely from the semantic context? Uh, so we got funding for it. You can see uh, there was a fair chunk of change, which attracted a, a lot of attention. We had 1,600 data science teams from across the world. Uh, that finished in June and uh, late June and um, the three winners are listed on our web or the three teams uh, are listed on the website. The 
models are up here, they're open source, the description and so on is, is here as well. And so um, the what we did, uh, the three agencies with which we we're working, NSF, uh, NOAA slash commerce and USDA had uh, given us data sets they wanted us to look at that they wanted highlighted. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how that works. So what we did was we took those models, uh, LCDA, as you know, uh, you got, we chorus uh, 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 set up uh, agreements with all of you. Uh, LCDA agreed to um, do a pilot with us. And so we applied the machine learning models uh, to the Scopus corpus to figure out what data sets um, were uh, in uh, the, the Scopus corpus. And I can, what, what we did was it created, let me just show you what that looks like. Um, it, we were able to pull out a relational database. Um, so let me share that. That enabled us to build an API. So, Here's an example for, exa for uh, NSF. This is, as you can see, from model three. Um, and the key thing here is it creates a publication to data set dyad. Uh, that then can be linked to the authors, to the topics, to the publications, the journal itself. Uh, and uh, obviously that's just a subset. There are many, many other pieces that you could get once you got to the publication information because you've got citations, you've got um, institutions, but this is just the initial build of the API. Uh, now, let me show you what, what some examples of what can be built and what has got the agencies super excited. Now, I'm gonna show you primarily uh, the work with USDA and NOAA NSF has actually been taking this, these initial results uh, and both the relational database and the API, and they're building a dashboard that they're going to present at that workshop uh, about which more in just a minute uh, in, in October. So uh, here's the way in which rural urban continuum codes, which is one of the big data sets for USDA, uh, is actually a big part of the conversation in Washington right now, because there's so much interest in the rural urban divide. USDA, the White House, uh, the On the Hill, and Commerce, uh, there's been a bill about bridging the rural urban divide. And this data set is, people have been asking, what can we learn from this data set? This description is what's currently both on the USDA website and on uh, data.gov. It's not particularly informative, but when you uh, tie it to the publications, then you can see how the data are being used. So just like amazon.com, uh, before 20 years ago, the way in which books were described was by metadata on how it was produced, the name, the author, the title, the ISBN number. And if I wanted to find out information about the book, I'd have to go and talk to a human being in the bookstore and they say, here are some other books like that. What we're able to do now is build an amazon.com for data that describes how it's being used. And that's why Jeff Bezos is a gazillionaire, right? So you're going to see in a minute how, um, what you're able to do here is click through and say, you know, you're interested in racial disparities in rural areas. Uh, who knew that uh, primary care and childhood cancer survivor, that these uh, environmental quality that it's used to study all of these things. Um, if you, um, this is an example for uh, NOAA's data you could click through and see the publications or the authors or however you want to look at it uh, so that you can then see how the data are particularly being used. Um, so that gives you a sense 
of how those word clouds could be made a bit more dynamic. And then you could click through to the actual publication itself. So it could be used, for example, for the publishers to drive traffic to your website, for the researchers to highlight the work that they've done, and you could kind of capture uh, uh, information about that. And obviously for the agencies to see how the, uh, how the data are being used. Um, I'm probably not going to have time, presum presumably, but um, we also have a very, from the API, just a very plain Tableau presentation. A lot of the agencies use Tableau. So the notion here is, you know, uh, how can you uh, just use Tableau to present the information? And uh, I could go live with this, but I'm, I'm not going to get the point. Uh, obviously, you want to get the researchers to say you've got it wrong. Um, one of the most powerful things, it turns out, uh, that uh, SJ Klein pointed out is people love to correct you. Uh, and the whole point of having a machine learning model is to get people to say, um, hey, you missed me. Uh, to get that AI uh, uh, back and forth. So uh, here's a very primitive approach to showing how data can, uh, we could might be able to engage the researcher community. Uh, and that's obviously the conversation that we're having with those guys. So uh, building uh, an interaction between or among researchers, publishers, and and uh, agencies is that ecosystem that we're discussing. So those those are kind of some highlights. Uh, and I I know that you've since you're presumably literate, you pre-read the information, and um, I just thought I'd give you some some of the context. Uh, and it might be useful. Um, actually, if you'll give me one more minute. Uh, uh, what I wanted to show was uh, the uh, website itself so that you had a little bit more context for the rich context work. Um, so to give you kind of the run of the day. So here's where we're uh, uh, setting this up. Suzette, who was my former boss, uh, who's been leading the charge she, uh, with the uh, GSA with data.gov, um, the industry groups, as well as uh, the CDOs. Uh, she'll open up. Um, speaker Paul Ryan, who got, with Patty Murray got all this started, will be giving a keynote. I'll walk people through kind of what, what's been going on. We'll have a member of the advisory committee uh, summarize the, win, win, the winning methods. Um, and then we have the agency scorecards. NOAA is still deciding whether they want their chief data officer of commerce or the chief data officer for NOAA to present. Uh, but you can see that um, uh, the agencies are gonna present their show and tell. They are polishing the usage scorecards. We'll be putting up videos of each of them saying why they care about it. Uh, the chief scientist for GAO, who's very influential both on the hill, obviously, as well as with the agencies, because they're kind of the GAO's kind of the watchdog, making sure the Foundations Act is implemented. So he's agreed to moderate it. Uh, we've got a panel of researchers. We're doing focus groups with them, just like we are with you now. Uh, that Nancy is leading. Uh, Howard is leading the conversations with you guys, but we're going to want your reactions. And of course, the federal agencies. So it's the CDO Council GSA, which runs data.gov, and which is the implementation arm of the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, that conversation is going. And then we will have feedback. Uh, I showed you this cut and paste, but here is where the agencies are feverishly working to get those demos in place, the ones that I just talked to, but instead of me talking through it, It'll be the people from the agencies presenting uh, why they're excited about this approach. Okay. Thanks, Howard. Mm -hmm.